Um, so let's get started. Uh, so just a bit of an announcement. Um, if you want a new community challenge, uh, one has been posted, and it is the come on, come on, the uh, humanoid luminescent humanoid elemental. It is due August sixth, and it is a little something like this. Um, the theme for this character design is luminescent humanoid elemental, so it's an elemental in a dark light environment. The twist for this challenge, there's always a little twist in the challenges, is that the empty background for the character design must present, represent a dark light environment. This invites you to attempt a kind of luminescence in the materials used to design the character. Anything can glow, but you should not drown out detail with overuse of light or excessive contrast. The elemental can be both female and, female and male, um, female or male. Whoops, not and, absolutely not and, uh, but cannot be an animal or creature of any kind. Uh, must be a full color uh, but empty colored background. I'd love to see a wide range of colors, colors in this design with swatches prepared in your mood boards, no monochromatic character designs. As with uh, every assignment, I must see gestural exper gesture experimentation in your blueprinting as well as any references collected for the mood board. No boring T-pose stances. The gesture must reflect the nature of the elemental. As with every character design, your character must be a combination of gesture, expression, costume, and all components must reflect the character's written narrative. So everything is reinforcing the character's design. The written narrative must be a paragraph long and must be handed in with your character. No reference images will be added to this assignment brief, as I do not want a reproduction of an elemental we've seen in other media. Um, that needed to be edited out because I tend to make these edits and for some reason I did add references. This I edited out a while ago but Reddit thought it wasn't worth saving and it must be female or male. Sorry one moment. I don't know why Reddit is not posting like all the pictures as you can see I only see two. There is a weird uh, problem right now with Reddit and extensions or some other glitch in the editing. Um, so yeah, some disclaimers. I don't want to see a rocky fire golem, and I don't want to see the same old ghosty female elemental with curves and a see-through dress. Uh, I think outside the box and bring in plant life, chemical reaction, combustion color range, and other units of life you can use uh, as the inspiration for the elemental, as long as it emits light somehow. Elementals can be anything, glowing gold material or a gem elemental, not necessarily specific or limited to basic magical elements like fire, water, earth, or air. Uh, you can have a de leaf elemental or a sun elemental, but not specific to fire um, per se. Purple electricity or anything that glows like a warm light humanoid that has a bioluminescence to it. Um, I have added both inspirational and reference images for you to use below. If you have any questions, please respond to this post. So if you guys have questions, go to Reddit and ask me here. Um, and uh, good luck. And if you don't see any of these reference images, the reference images I did upload are available. Let me see if I can find the, the folder itself that I have. Okay. Yeah, extra large. So these are your reference images and that you have a lot to work from. As you can see, you can have different ranges of colors for flames. You don't always have to have a rocky, flamey sun elemental. Um, you have different patterns, so I would invest some kind of silhouette into this very pattern and have a very simple isn't bad, uh, as long as you execute it properly. Um, these are some of the other shapes you can be exploring. Um, in your silhouettes for your elementals, though this is just one place to start of the many places that you can start. And um, what else? This is more of a bio bioluminescence here. It kind of glows with a diffused soft brush ambience. It's not really a direct or, or, or traceable shape. Then you have subsurface scattering, which you can interpret as an internal glow moving outward in a dark light environment of course no shadows no brightness it has to be a dark scene just like we see here 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 uh, here and here and here. yeah pretty much um, we have dark scenes so subsurface scattering technically needs a bright environment uh, but you can of course you have to force it into a dark light environment and borrow from the range and the pattern and the light texture I guess we can say of subsurface scattering into your character so you can have a lot of fun with all of this. 
Um, so if you want to join, you guys have a new community challenge. It's due August 6th. Um, and just like the past challenges, I look at them uh, all together on August 6th. I'm going to Puerto Rico uh, in August, so I'll be gone in August as well. I'm sorry, I, was, I just came back from a vacation. I have another one. I know a lot of shit is happening. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, so I'll be gone, and that'll be the last day I stream before I leave. I'll be back the 22nd or sometime in September. Um, so I try to give you guys, I try to leave with a big bang and, and show you guys a, a good time before I go. Um, another thing uh, to look out for is my Patreon. So if you guys want to join as patrons, you want to support with $1 or more, uh, the more you support, the more you get until Apprentice and you get everything, assignments, joining on private Discord, private streams, JPEGs, free brushes, um, private videos. Um, you guys get everything as apprentices, so if you want to join, it supports me, it supports what I do, and I, I, you guys are pretty much running this whole channel at the moment. My apprentices have kept me afloat, my patrons have kept me afloat, actually, and um, thank you guys so much to all the hard times that I've been through recently since January, all the medical issues, all the medical bills, you guys have pretty much kept me afloat, and I can't thank you guys enough. So if you love what I do, if you guys have appreciated or benefited from my channel, you can support directly. Um, through Patreon. Um, so let's get started with today's critique. Also, if you want to submit stuff for Critique Hour, go to my website, isterbrack.com, and click on the little Reddit icon right here. This is where you should join, and uh, that's where you'll be able to post uh, your work. Be patient, be respectful, give time to get a critique. You may get a critique from me if I feel like it, if it's part of our critique theme for Critique Hour. If not, you will get critiques from your peers. Just because you joined and just because you did a 14-day challenge doesn't mean you get a critique from me. Someone sent me a very, very rude um, uh, message on Reddit, uh, which I don't understand why they thought it was acceptable to send it. Uh, but my time is not does not belong to you, and I do what I can with the time that I have. And if you don't get a critique, you just don't. Uh, as long as you are giving critique in the community, you will get one. And I try my best to get to those who through educating them on their theme, um, uh, everyone else can benefit as well. So it's not always about your journey, it's not always about your specific uh, submissions. So have respect, be respectful in your critiques, and you will have a good time. Okay, sorry about that screeching noise, that was my mic. Um, so let's get started with this critique today. There are a lot of problems, and one of the biggest problems that you have is flatness. The whole image feels flat, and I'm sure you've noticed this. I didn't read through the things, so I don't have time to read through everything, um, but I, tr I do try to skim through what the commentary is from the, from the artist. But everything is flat. Nothing is reflecting. Everything feels like it's felt or it's made out of some kind of fabric. Everything feels so incredibly flat. So there's a lot of ways out of this. But let's talk about the biggest problem that you have. The way you've made her a silhouette and how much light you've limited in this scene makes it feel like this is way, they are way deeper in the cave than you're suggesting. So how dark you made everything makes it feel like they're this far into the cave and that's the cave opening in the distance. So that's how it would make sense that you have this much darkness around them. But look how big the cave wall really is. They're really close to the opening of this cave or a cavernous thing. It seems like they're about to enter a cave. If they're not in a cave, you did this wrong. If they're in an open scene. But it seems like you're about to enter a cave. Um, and some of the biggest issues that you have is that you haven't represented the fact that they're right at the door of this um, forest swamp cave thing. And we need to address that. So we need to talk about what's going to be the brightest object. We need to know what our focal point is. Our focal point is obviously her. So I'm bringing in dodge tools so that we can establish her as the focal point. She's like the Mary figure and this is the Jesus figure. You're borrowing a lot from classical framing, uh, classic kind of painting motifs and uh, we're just bringing in some exciting contrast around the focal point. Another thing I'm going to do is establish how much light we're seeing on the character. So the forehead is bulbous and it is attaining some form of light. And this light is blue that is falling on the face. Um, so the nose needs some more light. 
Yes, the, 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 the eye sockets can cast sh some shadow, but it wouldn't be so much that these cheekbones, these upper lips wouldn't get any. We would get that top-down ambience. So I'm canceling a lot of this light out. Okay. Not all of it, just most of it. I'm also going to throw in a cast shadow for the nose, which you've neglected. Okay, so she makes a little bit more sense. So now we have this blue ambience and this greenish white light behind her. So we need to unify the light that is being seen behind her. So we need to give the light one universal tone. And I'm going to give it that blue tone that we're seeing everywhere else. Um, but I'm going to try to also entertain that yellow tone coming from above that is allowing her to shine as much as she is. So one thing I can do to achieve that actually is just duplicate the layer, get dodge tool, and just brighten behind her. Going up into one particular part of the painting to represent that illumination and then just delete away at what isn't a part of the illumination. So. So we've already come a, a long way, so let's take a look at the before and after already. Um, so we've done a lot. We've established a stronger light environment. We've established a color for the light environment. I don't know why there's all this talking. I don't know why there's talking in the chat. There shouldn't be any talking in the chat. There should be no talking or commentary right now. I didn't ask a question, so there shouldn't be all this um, chit-chat. That's enough. So we have before. Her face felt caved in as well because her nose was not responding to any light source. After. All right. So if you guys have questions, you can save them towards the end when I start accepting questions. All right. So she is going to be the silhouette. So I'm going to give her just a little bit more shadow. Um, and that's going to be with a burn tool just so that I could have control over any highlights being affected. Oopsie. Daisy. And I'm going to try to apply that anywhere that's not receiving any light. Him, however, and again, he has this armor on and it's not being, re it's not representing any particular nearby color. That's the problem here is that you had no environmental reflection bright enough or respectful enough of the light source on this character. Any point here where you had to represent the light source you couldn't because it was too dark or too murky and everything felt like it was not reflective enough or didn't have enough exposure to the light source because you painted as if everything was made of felt or fabric okay so no chit chat please this area here is not getting a lot of reflection because she is blocking the source of the light which is directly behind her and above. So this area would technically be hidden from any light, the top of the armor. It would get some kind of ambient reflection but not a lot. It would be mostly towards the sides that do look forward at the light source. Then we have reflective light. So the water reflecting back on his armor and this area would stay dark. So armor doesn't mean everything gets a shine on it. Armor doesn't mean that. Armor means the same thing as any other form means. It means that if something is looking at the light, something gets light. If something is looking away, it doesn't get it. It's just the only condition is that armor has a high reflectivity, so it's going to be more susceptible in reflecting the nearby light source. And then you've got his face, which should technically be exposed to some level of the light source, but you've kind of outlined it A little bit. See that outline you had? Not everything is a silhouette. Write that back to me, please. Not everything has to be a silhouette. Not everything is this gung-ho, all guns cocked outline until you can't breathe uh, invitation to make everything a, 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 a graphic kind of clip art. It's not like that. You have to assess the form. Does the form look at the light? Yes. Is the form exposed to some level of the light? Yes, it does. One thing I don't understand is your shape language. Is this hair? Why is the hair shaped like an umbilical cord? 
I mean, if it was wet, maybe, but like I'm sure hair is capable of, you know, a, a bit more variety, curls or some kind of clumps of hair. Give us something that we can work with. You can't expect everything to be brushed off as, well, hair does do this eventually. I mean, like hair has been known to clump. And, well, it's less likely it clumps as one piece. So try to give us a bit more of a proper read or get rid of it because at the end of the day, that, that clump of hair read as some kind of alien head anatomy kind of, it didn't really read as actual hair. It didn't really read as you know, hair, it read as some object, it read as an object. And the hair is kind of objectless. So if it was a woman, I mean, this would make sense to make the hair a bit more wavy, but I'm just gonna do that for now. And I'm gonna adjust the um, subsurface here on some of these clumps of hair. And I'm gonna do a fun little trick with my sponge tool and just saturate along the hair just seam in some gold along with all of that and then just try to bring in more of saturation around her head just again re reinforcing that Mary motif and going back to her I'm going to grab some of that yellow beige that warm light and use it to reveal a bit more of her person continue that silhouette down. And so I've established some rules. There are some areas that are not getting a lot of light. There are some areas that are slightly turned towards the light. There are some areas that are bouncing light. And then finally, there's that water, which is one big armor piece, one big reflector sitting around that nobody's really paying attention to. And this is the game changer here. We have to start bringing in the environment on the water way more because that water is very capable of reflecting the environment around. And these objects are neither strong enough, nor opaque enough, nor present enough, or nor large enough to, ref to deny the light source. So just take a look at that. So much is happening already. I'm not a big fan of all that brightness here. I want a little bit more, more orange. <coughs> All right, so obviously some of this has been, been pulled off with soft brush. I have to work with soft brush when I can. And I'm still carrying up that brightness in the environment. There really has to be a lot of brightness for us to even have a silhouette. If things were all overcast, you don't get silhouettes in overcast. You just don't because it's just not bright enough. So write that back to me. You need direct light to have a, to have a silhouette, and you need a darkish environment to really get a nice silhouette. I'm still having trouble kind of figuring out what you were trying to do with this character. So the cylinder of their neck, for instance, wouldn't have just one plain silhouette to them. They would have full-on light. So the neck cylinder would be shaded as if it was a basic cylinder in space. Then the entire lower eyebrow area is being exposed to some light source. And as you can see, I'm blocking in plane by plane. So you gave us a silhouette, but you gave us a uh, um, overcast environment and a pretty dark, murky scene without enough brightness around to do anything. So can someone explain why that's a bad idea? Why we need to match our light environment? What does that do for our painting? You need direct light to have a silhouette. Yeah, or something similar or, or at that level. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just as long as it's not this cloudy, murky scene and you're giving us a sunrise silhouette on these characters. It just makes no sense. Another thing that you're missing is the other side of the brightness on that horn. You have almost no volume in any of the shapes you have here. None of your shapes invite volume or represent any volume to them. No bounce light, no direct uh, core shadows, nothing. 
So it's not that, you know, you're bad at drawing or that you missed a really bad, uh, you know, fundamental, go back to the drawing board, never draw in color again. Um, as, as cool as that would be for you to just really go crazy and start taking your education to a whole new level and forbidding yourself six months without any uh, master studies and or, or, or masterpieces and just tr going for that you know that crazy regimen that rocky level da -da 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 -da, like level um, studies form studies 10 form studies a day and then in the afternoon I'm gonna do a master study and you know it'd be cool if people did that after every one of my critiques because that's really what it takes um, to get a good handle on where core shadows sit but you know, obviously no one's going to do that. I could dream. Uh, so we, we instead, I try to find a middle ground. So do some more form studies where you're assessing the presence of the light source. The light on her forehead would be shared between her horns. So just because they're horns doesn't mean they get a different light source. And her light, her forehead is a bit shiny. I just want to put it on protect tones. So I'm going to give a bit of a shine on her forehead, right where her hairline meets, moving up. And I'll try to, in zooming out, try to correct and reestablish that silhouette because my edits brought in a alien values outside of the region of the silhouette. And so I need to bring everything back down. And some of your areas here feel a little bit over outlined, so I'm going to smudge out the lips. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for the expressions to really read, I feel like you you need a bit more exaggeration on the expressions. Um, so let's jump into liquify and just raise those eyebrows up asymmetrically. Distress is asymmetry. And I'll try to create some trace of presence in her pupils as she's looking down. This is all really sad. Alright, and then one more thing I'm going to do is just adjust the contrast just to make sure where are you? I always lose you. Um, just to make sure we're working in the right theme again. And then wherever we get closer to the reflecting light source is where we start using a bit more brightness. And so we have the reflection of the character in the water and then the shadow of the character. Both things happen in the water. So we have the reflection of the character and the shadow of the character. So it's not always that clean, obviously, that if the water is murky or, or swampy, there isn't going to be that much of, of a reflection, but there is definitely a, a difference. And I'm going to try to sharpen back away from the soft brush I used. So I have to use soft brush for the critique hour to get things paint down and get the critique hour finished. I hope it doesn't take away too much. Then there's the shadow of that entire section over there. And now I just want to talk about color. Um, before I do, now that we added more reflection in the water, and I have to talk about color actually, so I'm just going to do it anyway as if it's grayscale. Um, the water now being reflective and strong will reveal more of the character, so I'm sorry about the colors that are coming through right now. I have no idea what these colors are. But now these colors can emerge a little bit better. And we can kind of see a bit more of the character's frame here. Another thing is some of the light comes through and separates her from the thing she's holding. So we're going to create an, uh, an, the illusion of depth. That one character being divine not more, more so or less so divine, I'm not sure about the story, 
but obviously Mary and Jesus were equally divine. So they're both drowned in light, but... Fuck. Uh, what we have to do... Son of a... Is uh, just separate the two from each other. Thematically, but also technically, because it'll help us create a distance between the two. And like there's a bit of a glow separating the two. Okay, and then if you want to, in the direct opposite lasso, we can show how we can possibly in an acceptable amount create a rim light around the, sh the, sh the, the chest plate here that represents a reasonable amount of light sitting on the other side of the armor that is somewhat visible to the camera. Remember, rim light is just an illusion. It's not a phenomenon. It's just position of camera relative to object in silhouette. Sometimes you can see things in half of the silhouette or all of the silhouette and you see some of the light on the other side come through. And now I'm going to shade in some of these areas, like the top of the shoulder, right over here, getting some light. But our colors are still wacky, wacky everywhere. These colors are flipping everywhere. Um, so I need to see what saturation reveals to us. I don't know what just happened. Saturation reveals. I mean, yeah, this is how much saturation you actually need right now. <laughs> but it, it could just be in a different temperature. But I truly believe this is as much saturation as you need at the moment. So her, because we're, right now we're switching through different saturation levels. So I would say she needs to be here somewhere. And if she has an identity color for her species or whatnot, start there and move from there. So him being in a dark blue environment or her, I don't know, the red one, um, they need to be more of a purplish red, but she needs she needs to move back towards beige. So you, you're jumping, you're, you're in from all kinds of angles, and I say the best one that reads the best is when she's blue and the sky, when she's purple and the sky behind her is yellow. But again, you're not really getting all the yellow you're supposed to be getting because just take a look at where yellow is in the sky. It's somewhere... So this is green, the sky. Look look at the sky color or the outside color. This is when it's yellow, but she's turquoise. We need to bring her back to where the sky is yellow and she's purplish. But right now the sky is green. So you are coming in from all angles, buddy, and that's not acceptable. Um, you, if it's outdoor, if it's murky, if it's not necessarily bright, then don't saturate out there because that's not the colors you were using. You have no business bringing in green in the background if you just didn't have a bright enough environment to show that. Where's that green coming from? If it, is it sunlight? Is the sun high in the sky? If it is, why is there no light on the, on the water? So you need to decide what you're doing and you need to move on from there. So let's let's just do that. So you guys gotta you guys gotta answer these questions. All right, so I'm going to bring in just a bit of gold in the background. And I'm going to let some of that gold seep into the water, and that's going to create a beautiful response between environments, or for the whole environment. Look at that. We've created a unison, and it's made sense. Then anything that is not that gold is going to be purple. And we're going to use this pastel color that is on her. And that will be the color we use on everything that is not in that environment of light. Anything that is being reflected on by the water will also be yellow. And I'm going to do that saturation movement now. I hope everything is a bit more balanced. I mean, it's as good as I can get it. 
Um, and then you've got these trees, which feel more like kind of bushes than trees. You need to get a bit more of a definition here into the background so things can look clean. Real separation between levels of brightness. And I'm just using the nearby environment. Oops. Really basic tree shapes for now. Alright, so just cleaning up nicely. And then wherever the tree line stops for the leaves, that's where we're going to just stop using leaf texture. Right, so we can have real defined background space. And it'll help the scene. And then of course we do have to blur the background a little bit. So I'm just going to duplicate, filter, blur. Gaussian blur into the background and then erase away at whatever is not the focal point at whatever is the focal point, my bad and whatever is not kind of just takes a backstage okay, but your colors are still really off I still don't understand a lot of this there's still a lot of editing to do and unifying your colors. Um, for instance, like if the if there was a blue sky or some kind of turquoisiness to the color of the water, like let's just take some creative liberties on my behalf here and just bring in that watery, like a magical watery color. Let's just lay that down first. That color has brought so much boldness and beauty to the scene, just alone, just that color. And then now you can just sift through a bunch of, like the water doesn't have to have a million different, um, I should have done that in another layer. The water doesn't have to have a million different colors reflected in it for it to just be water. It can have its own little, sorry, one minute. I don't know why color mode isn't working anymore. Maybe it's been fixed. But yeah, it can have one clean color to it. As long as that color is clean, it'll read as water. So I'm just going to brush through different color possibilities here for the water. Let me lower the opacity a bit. No, I'll just lower saturation. I'm just going through water being this color, water being this color, this color. I mean, obviously some of these aren't working because they're just deliberate, like this would be blood or something like that. So we're just choosing a color that is more unified. And sometimes no color does more or more toward gray, but in the blue zones we will do more to read as water. And now that we have our reflections in place. But you had so many different reflections going, it looked like oil especially after we saturate it. And so now what I want to do is all of this as well as correct the color of the background because that background is killing me. So I'm going to saturate for the sake of the background choose where I want to stop in the background. Maybe over here is good. And then just delete everywhere else. Oh, I'll shift it if I don't like it. I'll shift it back, of course. It's only oversaturated because I need to know what I'm looking at. Completely inverted the background color from where it was. Looking a bit messy, but that's okay. And then you have this outline around this character. It's, it's not good. Not good at all. And so I desaturated the background a bit or put it on color just so that background value can slightly have a similar tone
to what we see in the water. So sky and water are the same thing because what we would try to do is unify one reflecting the other a bit more, right? And so we're showing off a more real environment by unifying the color between the sky and the water. And then we have that surface brightness. This is where you were before. Again, I don't get it. And then we're still keeping the yellow on her. We're still keeping that yellow everywhere around her. She's still divine, don't worry. But we've now unified those two, and then we need some surface reflection on the water itself. Because you can't just... Their shadows aren't strong enough to deny the light completely. So this sky is looking a bit purple and the water is looking a bit turquoise, so I'm going to try to uh, match the two even more. I don't really always use Control u to match my colors. And if there are greens somewhere in the background, they really don't matter at this point. We've done so much already with their colors that we're just going to take a little bit more liberty here and re preserve the colors for all the objects that deserve color. And then I'm just going to get rid of this holy outline around this character. They may be holy in the story, but they should not be another competing focal point. They should just be the dark character they are, or the death that they symbolize. <clears throat> and I'm getting rid of all this extra color here. Right, and you can see we're doing so much more with less. We're not overdoing anything anymore. And things look more unified. Anywhere where there's ambient reflection of the sky color, we use the blue. And this is how I would do it. This is how I would have executed um, this kind of light environment. Always cleaning up levels of depth as we go because we don't want to you know be amateurs with everything blending together kinda just destroys the scene and you uh, need to find more definition in stuff that is close up versus far away like this little stick here I'm not sure if it's connected to a tree or it's just a random stick hanging out in the, in the foreground, if there was, you know, another really cool little stick here could create so much more depth for the scene. Just something in the foreground, or a couple other weeds sticking out from under the water. Alright, so I'm not going to do that there, but I, I really recommend you clean that up. So the scene is still looking a bit dark for my taste, especially here where her body tends to mix with the water and with his arm. And then again, it just gets really messy. And I don't know where her shadow is and where his shadow is in the water. You see? So now we kind of can tell the difference between the two. And then there's the space in between where his body's submerged. That spot can use a bit more ambience just wherever the light is getting close to him. And then we've separated the shadow of his arm. And we're just being really picky about what gets to be pitch black because nothing is pitch black yet. You're saying that there's a lot of light around her, unless that's unexplainable divine light. And magic shouldn't always get you out of every situation you find yourself in. Magic doesn't solve all of your form problems. You don't say, oh, it's magical. It's doing that because it's magical. No, that's a bad artist. A bad artist says, oh, she has her own personal light source. It was a dark day, but she had her own personal light source. No. The more, you're just doing yourself a disservice because what makes yourself, what makes your art look realistic is that you did the realistic thing. If you're using magic to get out of doing the realistic thing, then is your art really still realistic? No. Because we don't have a codex of magic fundamentals and which ones keep your work looking realistic. We have a codex of actual realistic fundamentals we use. A little bit more bounce light here. And I'm just going to bring in some drowning light from the top. Just at the top edge of the canvas. Really to make it feel like there is a lot of light. And that light around her, you can, you can go crazy with that. You can do all kinds of stuff with that. 
And finally, I'm going to desaturate this red because it's uh, the, the red is something the original piece looked a little bit too red for me. And I feel like, I don't know, every time I see an alien person or an elf species or something that looks red, that has red skin, it just doesn't read on screen very well. Something about it just looks off. It's only really the top of the, the helm, I mean the thing that looks like that. So uh, I, I would do a lot more. I would probably bring in some glare. I love light effects. I kind of, I don't, I try not to go overboard with them, but it's very easy for me to go <laughs> overboard with them. So there's that glare here on the helmet. There's the glare there. There's the glare coming in between her hair. There's the glare distorting the shape of her horns on the edges. Um, there's light on her chest coming through. Uh, there's a bit more light just sitting around the rim of the water. A bit more shadow traveling across the water. Everything has a shadow. Stronger light kind of moving through, creating nice X shapes pointing inward towards the focal point. Everything should point back towards the focal point. So I'll try to expand this shadow here. Now it's really looking like a Renaissance kind of religious painting. Obviously this is more diffused because it's not as a strong a body. I mean, it's an ori it's orig it's, it, the original shape of the hair looked like a thing. <coughs> Instead of a ha of hair, it looked like a general thing. Alright. Um, and then I'm just going to reestablish that framing towards the lower half to, to, to you know, a hint that we are in the darker half of the character's life. I mean, <laughs> of the cave. And, I mean, it's your choice if you want to keep the yellow. I'd take the yellow out just because I feel like we're doing enough with the contrast and we have enough reason. But if her hair is golden, then you can keep some behind. But a lot of the character is gone in this excessive murky shadow that you threw everywhere uh, and this all happened why because you disrespected your light source just showing a bit more of what the armor can do and this armor is should be bright all the way through I mean it's the light is facing all the way I'm not sure why it's not getting the brightness it needs all the way down. Lighten. And then we'll see the before and after. And uh, that'll be interesting to look at then. I don't want to affect her shape. And then the shadow would be where your light started, actually. But really, I would just, I would just throw the whole dang thing in some shadow, and start over, because the arm, the hand that's holding him, which you really need to work on, is. Uh, is also in shadow at that level. Mm -hmm. Dark hand is better. That's just more clean to make it darker. Okay. I'd, um, before I finish off, I'd go back and uh, shrink the brush. I'll probably get my blocking. Go to lighten mode and just 
And you're overusing textures here, my friend. Drop the texture brushes. They're not going to do the work for you. Careful with those texture brushes. They aren't going to paint for you. They aren't going to make your painting look any better. They're not going to help you. They don't have a little alarm attached to them that signals bad use of fundamentals. Brushes don't do anything for you if you don't know what you're doing. But yeah, go back and sharpen all those areas. I'd use a combination of smudge and sharpen. To just to find a nice, even texture where we get shadow, but also surface of the water coming through. So we'd have a sharpened section, and then suddenly something gets smudged out, because that's just what water does. It's ripples. And so pictures come in and out on the surface of the water. The pictures reflected on the surface of the water. See that? So it's a combination of sharpen and smudge, and it's just my smudge brush scatter on 50% smudge, and I'm just trying to create a rippling effect in a sphere shape around them. Um, these are my changes. I feel like we just need so much more diffuse. Um, I feel like I need to just grab the watercolor, take a soft brush, and just throw it over everything here. just that exact water reflection color because that's what's coming through right now on this character. They just need more response to the light environment. And then more shadow on this part of the on the legs. Alright, let's take a look at the before and after. Um, do I want to? We, we may have some brightness coming in on either side of her cheek that I just noticed. Right over here. I just have to... I mean, it looks appropriate as long as I smudge it out. and being careful not to let her neck feel too strong. I mean, she is picking up a guy all on her own, but the neckline is what symbolizes femininity, and be careful not to corrupt that. If this was supposed to be a man, you did it all wrong. If androgyny is the only way you paint, that's not the sign of a very good portfolio. So learn how the difference between male and female. You can get a male when you mean one. So before, after. What are the differences? There's more reflection in the water. There's a defined time of day now. There are very specific, deliberate colors we've used on her. We're working with a well-established motif that artists who lived way before we did used as well. We're not above fundamentals. We're not above form studies. We're not above the light environment and respecting the light source within which all things exist in your canvas. The reason why things look muddy and dark and kind of cut out and flat is because you over outlined and you don't really know what a silhouette is right now and that's why you have outlines literally on every square inch of this thing and you didn't need them you just needed your main silhouette and that was that do you guys have any questions at all so very big changes the water is now reflection there are cast shadows we have a defined object on either side of the uh, canvas and the outlining in the, the, the composition is, gr is good. It's a great composition. I think you're inspired or maybe you did borrow a, from a classical piece. But, um, but I hope you like today's critique. Is the, is the artist with us today? Any questions at all? So you guys can ask your questions now. <laughs> because magic. There are some anatomical issues that need to be corrected, but uh, would the painting look better with a bigger canvas or another a a another angel? Um, no, I wouldn't say it needs anything else. I just think that it needs a bit more um, work done on the uh, armor. 
think the armor is front and center and it's got really, really simplistic brushwork to try to get out of the bulk of the work that is the armor. I think you need to go in there and break up each plate and have more appropriate representation of each reflective plate. It's like 50 armor form studies. Just think of it like that and you'll get through it. Instead of being overwhelmed by the amount of 50 form studies ahead of you or every single plate of this armor, you chose armor. You know what you're getting yourself into. So don't choose armor for your illustration and then back out of it by doing rough brush strokes here and there to help, help create the illusion of armor. And you drown the crap out of it in darkness anyway. So all you really had were outlines of the armor plates, not actual armor reflected in the scene. So that's what we're missing left. That's what's left. You don't need another dude. You don't need anything else. It's going to look clustered and gross. You just need to make sure you go on with this. I love the tilt of her head. I love that axis. It looks great, that line right here. Uh, it looks great. Let me get a better brush. That line cutting through like that is absolutely beautiful. I'm going to zoom all the way out. It's just spot on right where it's supposed to be, the tilt of her head. Um, I like how tilted he is. I like how everything is kind of pointing down back. So you had, not most of these, but you had a lot of these in the old piece. So your composition was good, except the hair really just looked like a big, like alien head. Like, you know, alien, like alien versus predator. You really don't need that. Okay. Um, thank you for taking the time. You're very welcome. Um, I have a very general question about smudging. I have your smudge brushes, but no matter what I do, it all looks like a giant swirl. What should I try? Turning down scatter or change my brush stroke? If you are using my smudge brush and the strength is high, you're not going to get a successful smudge. If you're using smudge brushes, put it down to 4 or 9%. That's the only way you're going to get smudges that look like mine. Also, if your tablet sensitivity is really, really high, you're going to get more smudge than you asked for. So make sure your tablet sensitivity is nice and low. So if you're using Wacom, um, it would be something like uh, pen, current pressure, eraser feel. So I would go for a softer touch. Um, and, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd go for a softer touch on everything. Uh, but you know, let me just put it back on default, double click distance. Okay, and then, so 9% right here is me smudging this out. So look at how easy that is to smudge. And these are, this is low pixels right now. It's a pretty small canvas size, but look at what happens if it's a large. Yeah, this is way too big. And I don't know which brush you're using where you're getting swirls. It might be the number two. Maybe these. So this, is, this is a beautiful one. I love this one. Um, but look at it when it's low strength really just does a beautiful job smudging and reorganizing. That's my favorite brush to use. So make sure you're using low strength on my smudge brushes if you're trying to... Dude, I'm in the middle of class. Um, sorry, one moment, that was my sister. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're trying to get the same feel as I am, Sorry, I'm just replying to my sister. <laughs> um, yeah, so what would be the best way to study armor? Um, just piece by piece. Get one plate down, understand how it reflects, then try to get armor that you feel like you'll keep going back to in your designs. Um, what I don't understand is why his face has no real highlight. Um, I just didn't get to it. It can have highlights on the nose. It can have bounce light coming in from the side. It can have bounce light going up this way. There's a lot of highlight potential on his face. There's just so much more. But it's not going to be a full-on silhouette like hers because technically the light is behind her. She's the angelic character. She's the one picking up the character out of his dark, dark reality. Um... Uh, there's another class this Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you guys show up to that. And if you want your work critiqued, go to istabrak.com and go on the Reddit icon here to join Reddit, submit your work, give critique, and you'll get critique possibly from me. If you want to create, um, if you want a place to hand in your 14-day challenge, the Reddit is, is perfect for you. If you want, it, want answers 
for the 14 day challenge what it is go to the community tab and scroll down if you want my brushes or any of the brushes that you saw today go to my store um, and if you want to support everything that I do um, I don't work with any sponsorships I don't work with agencies or marketing um, and I don't have a channel rep yet so I haven't hit 100k so I don't really have anything other than Patreon um, and if you guys want to support with Patreon I really appreciate it supports me directly keeps me doing this keeps me coming back and um, and well, of course the teaching is what keeps me coming back but thank you to everyone who supported you guys have completely lifted the channel off its legs um, thank you all I will see you guys on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern time bye guys